You don't have to create a mockup from scratch every time you have a new design. All you need to do is to just drag and drop your design like this. Hit enter or return. Turn off the mockup placeholder. Save it. Hit OK and automatically, if you get back to the mockup file, it's there, right there. You might think I'm cheating. Let us try one more time. Let's go back to this and this time, we're going to paste another design. Let's try this one. Paste it, hit enter or return. Turn this one off or delete it, up to you. I'm going to make it slightly bigger. Control or Command S to save it. And then if you get back to the mockup file right here and there you have it. Easy, isn't it? And it has all the highlights, the shadows, the creases, peaks and valleys, everything it needs to look realistic. This is what we're going to learn in this video. It's super easy to do. So without any further ado, let's get started. Creating a drag and drop mockup consists of just three simple steps. Step number one, create a simple placeholder. That's all you need to do. Create a placeholder that represents both the bright and the dark colors. That's it. Step number two, place the placeholder on the surface. It can be a t-shirt, mug, whatever you're creating the mock-up of. Step number three, placing your design in the placeholder. Now, since the placeholder is already placed and matched with the t-shirt, your design will automatically match. To recap, step number one, create a placeholder. Step number two, place the placeholder on the surface and match it. And step number three, place your design inside the placeholder. Now, since you have a placeholder, the advantage is you can change the design anytime you like, like we did with this example. You can replace it, you can keep it empty, all up to you. Back again in the magical world of Photoshop. And if you want to go ahead and download this photo and follow along, you know what to do. Check the links in the description. Step number one, creating a placeholder. You can create a simple gray square like this and maybe work with that. Let us change the stroke to none and fill to gray and go with that. But I recommend creating a placeholder that represents both bright and dark colors so that you can check whether your technique is working with all kinds of designs. For example, if I were to create a blank new layer and paint with bright red, if I change the blend mode to multiply, this works for this particular squiggly line. But if I change it to screen, that doesn't work for this one, but may work for some other designs in some areas. Also, if you have a simple square placeholder like this, let us suppose this is gray, there is no way we would be able to tell the peaks and the valleys, the bumps here and there. So we need a placeholder that has all the brightness levels and can show the ups and downs. Don't worry, you don't have to create it. I have a gift for you. You can download this placeholder that I created by using the links in the description. All you have to do is to just download it and place it on your mockup. That's it. It has all the shades and the grids too. Let us adjust it. This seems to be about right. Hit enter or return. And that's step one, creating the placeholder. But you don't have to do that. Just download it. Whenever you're placing a placeholder or creating one, you want to make sure that it ends up being a smart object. If not already, you want to right click on that layer and choose convert to smart object. This one already is a smart object. How can we tell? By this icon right there. But if it wasn't, you would do that. For instance, if I were to create a brand new placeholder, something like so, filled it with gray, you would right click on it and choose convert to smart object. This will allow us to get inside of it later by double clicking on the thumbnail, but that's for later. For now, you want to make sure that your placeholder is a smart object. That was just for demo. Let's delete it. And you already have your placeholder. Before we move to the next step, I wanted to share with you that if you are interested in complete Photoshop training in detail, where we talk about all the concepts of Photoshop step by step in chronological order from start to finish and beyond, I've launched a complete Photoshop course that keeps growing. So far, we have uploaded over 98 lessons. It's available at piximperfect.com. Actually, it is not launched yet, but you can get early access. And for early access, early bird, we are giving a heavy discount. I highly recommend that you just check it out, see what is included. Whether you're getting started with Photoshop or never opened Photoshop in the first place, or even a seasoned pro, you will find immense value in this platform. All of the lessons have follow along examples, so you can watch the lesson download the assets and follow along at your own pace. And actually, we have more than 300 assets right now. So check it out, piximperfect.com or the links are in the description as well. Moving on to step number two, and that is placing and matching the placeholder with that of the surface. Placing, in other words, means shaping up and matching using blend modes or whatever technique that you like. Do keep in mind that the techniques and the methods of matching will differ. 
if the t-shirt color is different, if the lighting is different, no matter what method you use, the concepts remain the same. By the way, we have other videos for different colors of t-shirt. You can watch it right here. Let's go with this simple gray t-shirt for this example. First of all, let us create the bumps in the design according to the shirt. Now keep in mind, it's much better to do with Liquify. It's gonna be more accurate, but for little bumps here and there, even displacement map will do. All you need to do is to select the main background layer, right click on it and choose duplicate layer. And in here we need to choose new document and let us name it displacement. That's it. Now in this new document, which has been created, first of all, let us take away all the colors by pressing Control Shift U to desaturate. Now, we are going to create a bump map with it. This image will tell the Photoshop filter where to create the bumps, where the peaks and the valleys will be. If you zoom in right here, we don't want to create the bumps according to the slight texture of the fabric. We only want to create the peaks and the valleys of these folds right here. So let us remove the texture by simply going to filter, blur, Gaussian blur. Let us go with 18, that is fine. If you zoom out, only the folds are showing up and only those should show up. Hit OK. Now let's save this as a PST. Let's go to File, Save As, and I'm gonna save it right here. Click on Save. Let's get back to our mockup document. Select the placeholder right here. Go to Filter, Distort, and Displace. Now this number decides how much bump there is. Let's set it to 10, 10, sorry, not 2010. Keep the settings as is, hit OK. Now in this dialog box, select the displacement PST that we just created, click on Open, and have a look it creates bumps accordingly. If you think the bumps are less, it needs to be more bumpy. You can again double click on the smart filter and set the value to maybe 20 and 20. You can choose values accordingly, hit OK. Let's pick that one again, hit open. And now the bumps are more. Now it may not be very accurate, but it will do. The next thing we need to do is to decrease the sharpness. As you can see, the design is just way too sharp. Real printed stuff is slightly blurred. So let us go to filter, blur, Gaussian blur. And for this one, not that much, maybe one pixel blur will do. If you hit okay right now, have a look. This looks more in line with how a print would look like, but I leave the number to you. Now let's work the magic of blend modes. We need to take care of dark areas and bright areas separately. So for the dark areas, change the blend mode from normal to multiply. And to make stuff simple, let us name this layer multiply. Now we only need to keep it in the dark areas and take it away from the bright areas. Also, it's crushing the blacks. For it, double click on the right hand side of the layer and take it away from the bright areas by using the slider on the right to the left for the underlying layer section. Of course, this is going to be too harsh. I recommend holding the Alt key or the Option key. Click on the slider, break it all the way apart actually, and take it apart. Have a look, this is coming back. So we're gonna set it to about this number, hit OK. But still, there is a bit of harshness there. How do we take that away? Make a copy of the multiply layer by pressing Control or Command J. That harshness is gone, but it's completely black. So this time, let's do the opposite. Double click on the right hand side of the layer. This takes us into the layer style dialog box in the blend if section. Let's reset it to how it was and take it away from the dark areas. Hold the Alt key or the Option key. Click on the slider to break it apart and actually take it all the way apart, like so. Have a look. That harshness, that washed out effect is gone. But this may be too much, so I'm gonna decrease the opacity to about 40%. That's nice. Now wait, it's not done. We still need to take care of the bright areas. By the way, if this were a white shirt, you wouldn't have to do the next steps. Steps would be slightly different. For this example, let us first rename everything. Organization is important. Now for the bright areas, let us make a copy of this layer by pressing Control or Command J. Now increase the opacity back to 100. What is the blend mode that brightens stuff up? Screen, right? So let's change the blend mode to screen. Now it may look nice, but it might not be accurate because the blend if right here is not only based on the t-shirt, but also the designs beneath it. So we do need to apply it only in the bright areas, but not according to blend if. Because have a look, if we double click on the right hand side of this layer, and if we play with the blend if sliders, if you have a look at how it's going away, it went away first from this block right here, instead of the bumps, of the t-shirt, it went away completely from this block. Still, it is there on these borders. So it's not accurate. It needs to be based on the t-shirt and not the design beneath it. So let's cancel it. We're gonna do it with masks. To reset the blend if, right click on it and choose clear layer style. 
This also clears the blend mode, just set it to screen again, that's fine. Now let's create a mask based on the brightness levels of the t-shirt. Hold the Alt key or the Option key and click on the eye next to the t-shirt. This will keep it solo and turn everything else off. Now we need to go to channels, hold the Ctrl or Command and click on the thumbnail of RGB. It will make a selection based on luminosity values. In other words, brighter areas will be selected more and darker areas will be selected less. With this selection active, first of all, hold the Alt key or the Option key, click on the eye to turn everything back on, scroll up, select the topmost layer and click on the mask button. And by the way, let us name it screen because this is brightening stuff. Now have a look how natural this looks. It's based on the brightness levels of just the t-shirt, not the designs beneath it. Now select the mask, press Ctrl or Command M or L depending upon whether you like curves or levels. Let's press Ctrl or Command M because I love curves. Now with the rightmost slider, just take it to the left hand side and stop where you begin to lose details. I'm going to keep it at about 170. A little bit of details losing is fine. And on the left hand side, take it from the left to the right. Have a look how natural this looks right now. This may be too much. So let's zoom out. This is how it was before. Let's take it to the right. Let's keep it at about 44. That's nice. Hit OK. And there you have it. Moving on to step number three and that is preparing this mockup and placing our design. Now it's already done, but packaging, beautiful packaging is important. To make it easy for you to place the design, first of all, let's make a copy of any one of these. For example, let's make a copy of Multiply by pressing Ctrl or Command J. Place it at the very top and you can name it your design here. Now remove all the smart filters from this one. Right click on it and clear all the layer style it should be absolutely blank. On top of that, decrease the opacity or fill to zero. So it's never visible. Now for additional beautiful and clean packaging, select the first adjustment, hold the shift key, select the last adjustment, press Ctrl or Command G. And you can just name it Adjustments. That's all. Now the mockup is done. Save it. All you need to worry about right now is replacing this design. Very easy to do. Just double click on the thumbnail, this opens up another document. In here, just place whatever design you want to paste or type something or design something up to you. Resize it, hit enter or return. Turn off the background layer. If you want to keep it, keep it, but why would you? Press Ctrl or Command S to save it, hit OK. And then when you close it, when it is saved, you don't even have to close it actually. When you get back, there you go. It's automatically placed. Everything is replaced right here. Now let me give you a bonus tip. How do you save this as a template instead of just a simple Photoshop document? Because right now if you save it as a Photoshop document, you open it, you change the design and for the next time it is changed. So how do you create a template instead? Let's go to File, Save As. Instead of saving it as PSD file, make sure choose Format Photoshop. Just add a T at the end. It should be PSDT, which means Photoshop document, T for template. That's all. And I'm going to save it as t-shirt mockup template and click on save. Hit OK and now you'll see the magic. Now when I close it and open that folder and open t-shirt mockup PSDT in Photoshop, see what happens. It opens as a brand new document. This is untitled one. It's not changing the original t-shirt mockup template. So in this document, if I were to replace this with something like so, hit enter or return, I'm going to turn this off, control or command S, once you get back and try to save it by pressing Ctrl or Command S, this is a brand new document. It's not replacing the t-shirt mockup template. Every time you open it, it's going to create a new document. That way your template file stays intact. If you want to change the original template Photoshop document, just remove the T from PSDT and it will open as a regular Photoshop document. That is all for this video. I hope this one helped. And no, I did not forget about your gift. And that is tiny gift, by the way. You can download this complete template, play with it, place your designs, see how it is made and use it for practice. Thank you so much for watching this one. And if you want complete professional Photoshop training from start to finish and beyond from absolute scratch to beginner to intermediate to everything, check out fiximperfect.com. The discounts are in the description. Just remember the three steps. Create the placeholder, place and match the placeholder and then prepare it and place your design in it like so. And that's all for this video. If this helped, make sure to give us a like and also don't forget to subscribe and not just subscribe, 
ring the bell so that you my friend don't miss any other future tips, tricks or tutorials. I'll see you in my next one till then stay tuned and make sure that you keep creating.